All right, Chem 20s, let's uh, get into our third unit. We have four chapters to go to finish off the course. Each one of these is going to be about two weeks of time. I'm looking at uh, May 6th or 7th for a chapter five quiz. And um, while you take a look at the solutions overview and study guide here, remember that this is all for chapters five and six put together. Okay, so we're kind of looking at a break right about here. Uh, everything in these sections, there's your chapter five. These two over here, that'll be chapter six, and we'll be dealing with those separately uh, just to make the quizzes more bite-sized and manageable. All right, there's some key terms in here. Uh, normally, I would take you guys through this, but uh, as we go through, I'm going to be dropping certain parts and uh, simplifying this unit wherever I can, taking out certain uh, concepts that either really don't carry forward or would just be, you know, kind of problematic to try and learn from home, and we'll deal with those in Chem 30 down the road. All right, so there is your overview. Certainly, if this was a regular uh, delivered course, I would expect you guys to know all of these terms. We'll probably look at about, I don't know, about three quarters of them by the time we're uh, finished chapters five and six. So let's get into it here, guys. All right, chapter 5.1, this is really just setting up the terminology. All right, I'm going to give this to you. I want you guys to go into the textbook and read on page 186 to 193. Please, not the glossary at the back. Trying to learn these things just from reading the dictionary isn't going to get it done. All right, what I want you guys to do is go through, define these um, five terms, but also provide an example to support each definition. Some helpful ones here on page 192, but you would need to go through and determine through uh, reading this context. What is a solute? Pretty simple. It's something that gets dissolved. Solvent, that's the substance that does the dissolving. Solution is the ratio of the two. Homogeneous and heterogeneous, that's something from Science 10 or Chemistry 10 that we did look at. Miscibility, I'm going to leave that one to you. It comes up in one of our labs, but I'm going to have you look at the old Googles for that one and just come up with a working definition for miscibility. And then from your readings, uh, in chapter 5.1, it shouldn't take you very long, kind of go through and uh, get a, a little example or maybe even just something from a quick internet search. But turn this into your own working definitions so that you know what to expect and have it make sense to you. All right, in the next video, I will come back to this, which will be in a, you know, a day or two on YouTube channel, and I will talk about these things again. But since this is terminology you guys need to know, you have to do the legwork. Just reading this to you will not make it stick. You doing it, writing it down, coming up with the examples, maybe doing it uh, twice, just to make sure that these words make sense to you. All right, as we continue on in 5.1, we want to take a look at these solutions that we're talking about. So you might want to do this work before you finish this particular lesson. But in properties of aqueous solutions, aqueous simply just means dissolved. We've seen that state before. We used it in Chem 10 and part of our Chem 10 review. And a solution is really just a mixture of some sort. So our solutions can be classified in many ways, but we start with two diagnostic tests. We did these in Science 10 as well, so I'm going to kind of rush through this. And if we take a look at our first one based upon conductivity, all right, that gives us two different types of compound, or pardon me, solutions that we can classify. When we test a solution to see if it conducts electricity or electrical conductivity, if it does, it is said to be an electrolyte. Something like a salt water solution would have all sorts of positive and negative ions as the sodium chloride dissolves and dissociates in that uh, water to give me all of these ionic salts, my acids, my bases, and this allows electrons to be conducted through the solution. If it doesn't, it's classified as a non-electrolyte. All right, and so while we can certainly dissolve things, it may not produce ions in solution, which would impede its ability to move electrons from one place to another through the solution. Things such as molecular compounds like sugars, all right, make great examples of non-electrolytes. Yes, sugar does dissolve in water, but it doesn't support an electrical current being flowed through it. So there's your classification. We can start to get towards if it's ionic, acidic or basic, or molecular, if we do a test for 
uh, electrical conductivity. The second test that we did, and we did a lab like this in uh, Chemistry 10, was also taking a look at its reactions with pH, or, or litmus for pH. All right, this allows us to go a little bit further because both ionic salts, acids, and bases all conduct electricity, at least most of them do. All right, so we need to figure out which ones are the acids, bases, and which ones aren't. So remember, acids would test litmus as red, bases would test it as blue, and neutral compounds, such as my ionic salts, and my dissolved molecules generally have no effect on litmus, and so we would see no color change. So an important thing to remember is that it is a two-fold test when we start looking at trying to classify these things. Please practice it with questions 1 to 6 on page 195. Remember, this is Science 10. You have done this. You're just refreshing your memory with the terms. And I want you guys to try lab assignment 5A. Really, some data has been given to you. You're going to employ these two tests to see if you can categorize something as acid, base, ionic salt, or uh, molecular compound. Remember that ionic salts and molecular compounds don't have an effect on pH, so they are neutral. Acids and bases will have this, so I need a conductivity test and a pH test to be able to classify my various solutions. Try the practice problems in 195 first. Don't just jump to the lab. I'm not going to be giving um, answers in emails to 5A if you haven't done the practice questions on uh, page 195. There's a sample lab here that you can do. If you can get that right answer, 5A should become very easy. All right, but again, remember, this is Chemistry 10. You can do this, you've got this. There's lab, or pardon me, chapter 5.1 quick hitter. Make sure that you're doing your readings. Take your time with that. Try some practice questions and then finally get to lab 5a and we'll talk about that one in the coming lessons. All right, good luck with it guys. I'll see you in chapter 5.2 uh, in the next day or so.